Good afternoon. Welcome to the Texas Education for Homeless Children and Youth McKinney Vento 301 Building Community Connections. We're excited to provide you with some great information today. But before we begin, let's review some housekeeping notes. If you are having technical issues, please post your comments in the chat box or email us at tehcy at esc13.net. When asking questions regarding today's presentation topics, we ask that those questions be submitted into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We understand that there may be some questions today that may require additional information, clarification, or may be better suited for a one-on-one -on -one walkthrough. Please reach out to our 1-800 hotline or email us with those more unique situations. Also, as an added note, if you are using a shared link, your name and email will not appear with your post question. So please be sure to add your name or provide an email address along with your question to ensure a response and or follow up. Those of you joining our presentation today via telephone, we ask that your questions be emailed to our team email as well. This training will provide strategies and best practices to develop and maintain McKinney-Vento program community partnerships to support students experiencing homelessness. Now let's go ahead and get started. My name is Martha Gonzalez. I'm an education specialist with the Techie Support Center located at Region 13 in Austin, Texas. Lizette Castaneda will be assisting me with our chats today, as well as Jonna Ramchander. And we also have a very special guest joining our webinar today, Ms. Cal Lopez, the Texas Education for Homeless Children and Youth Program State Coordinator. Cal, would you like to share a few words? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Martha. Yes, I just wanted to say good morning to everybody who's joining us today for a wonderful presentation and wanted to thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule as we're here at the end of the year wrapping up um, for the school year, but also to thank you um, for all your time, your, ded your dedication, your advocacy, um, and everything that you do for our students and families during this unprecedented school year. We wanted to say thank you and we hope you enjoy the presentation. Uh, the Tichy support team has done a great job at putting, to get, putting this together for you all this morning. Thank you, Cal. Now that we've introduced ourselves in the chat box, please let us know what area of our wonderful state of Texas are you joining us from today? Good morning. So it seems like we have, um, quite a variety of people joining us this morning. We have uh, Eugene Bernard, retired U.S. Coast Guard uh, with AB Christian Learning Center in Fort Worth. And we have Mary Patrick with Galveston ISD. Um, we also have uh, uh, joining us from Floresville, uh, Fort Worth again, Ms. Ballard. Um, we have participants from Round Rock, from Katy, Longview, Houston, Laredo, all over Texas, McAllen, Denton. Uh, we've got Region 6 uh, ESC, Irving, Texas, Arlington, um, San Antonio, Giddings, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Lamar CISD, um, thank you for being here this morning with us. communication plan to include systems to maintain community partnerships and our program resources and training updates. So that's our agenda for today. Um, we hope that you take away from this training opportunity these learning objectives, which include strategies and best practices to develop your McKinney-Vento program, community partnerships, strategies to communicate your program needs, and ways to monitor and maintain these partnerships. You can access and download the program resources and today's presentation slides on our webpage. We have provided you the link here on this slide 
And Jonna will also drop the link in our chat for you. The McKinney-Vento Act places a strong emphasis on collaboration as a means of, the, of meeting the needs of students and families experiencing homelessness in our McKinney-Vento education programs. A particularly effective tool for addressing those needs is implementing a needs assessment. So let's take a closer look at that. The goal of a needs assessment is to help identify student needs and gaps in services, understand and prioritize those needs of students experiencing homelessness, support a holistic program approach, evaluate resources and supports that will help fill in those gaps of services that maybe were not provided due to lack of funding. An effective needs assessment occurs at the beginning of the school year, during the school year, and when there are unforeseen events, such as we most recently experienced with COVID and the winter storm. Taking time to identify the needs of homeless children and families and the resources the school district and community offer will enable the mckinney vento liaison to make informed decisions about the types of supports that will result in services to enhance opportunities for school success. So now we're gonna have our first Zoom poll. So we would like your participation on the Zoom poll. So the poll is, who should be part of your mckinney vento program's needs assessment? And so um, we can look at, um, you know, thinking about, here we go. Yeah, so sh who should be a part of your McKinney-Vento Programs Needs Assessment? Let's look and see what people are commenting on this poll. And just a little note, the, the polls are anonymous, so please feel free to participate on this, as well as our chats, we wanna hear from you. Um, okay, so it looks like 98% of you said all of the above. That's awesome. Yes, we want to include all of those uh, people in our needs assessment. So start with your district and campus staff. Also include your students and families because they know best what their needs are and reach out to those community partners. We want to highlight the importance of the McKinney-Vento liaison collaborating with other programs, organizations, and agencies to set goals for the McKinney-Vento education program and services, and should also collect data on an ongoing basis to determine progress in achieving those goals. When getting ready to start your needs assessment, take a step back and look at mapping out your timeline to complete your needs assessment. This is an important step because mapping out your timeline assists the, with the organization of your process. First, you plan on having collaborative meetings with those members you have selected. Look at determining how many meetings you will have with those people. Also, you know, ensuring that you accommodate everyone's schedule, especially if you're including parents and students. Next, you may want to consider the use of a survey to collect your information. And if you do utilize a survey, determine which survey you would prefer to use to collect the data. You can decide the number of questions and information you need. For example, you can utilize a very simple three question survey for your students, your unaccompanied homeless youth, and even for staff like professional school counselors, to help identify the most requested needs or those needs that need additional supports. Also remember that you do not have to utilize surveys. However, for those larger school districts, I know how hard it is to get some of that information. So this might be an easier way for you to gather the information in a timely manner. A survey can be informal or formal. Lastly, incorporate within your timeline the opportunity to process and review the results of the data collected with those members that you have chosen. It's important to include them in this process so that you're able to talk through what you guys are, are getting together and how you're meeting those needs. Make this process as simple and organic as possible. 
Reflect on the tools that are already established within your LEAs. Many districts have established needs assessments, improvement plans, and data reports that can be utilized to help create your own assessment. Reflect on whether these established processes address the needs of students experiencing homelessness. If not, you would want to develop a needs assessment to include those needs that were not addressed. We also want to utilize the, the, the LEA processes that are already identifying trends and data. For example, at some school districts, the needs assessment for the McKinney-Vento Education Program is started by the campus designee. And then the district McKinney-Vento liaison incorporates the information as a whole into the McKinney-Vento Program needs assessment. Also, reflect on your Title I Part A collaboration super important collaboration to make a connection with because this connection is important to establish because it coordinates the reservation of funds for your district that may be determined based on a needs assessment. I always think of it like this, invite yourself to be part of the process. <laughs> always invite yourself to any meeting you can at, at your district. So now that we've discussed needs assessment evaluation, let's take a little walk through some next steps and considerations. If you have never completed a needs assessment before, these are some questions to consider to assist you with your development. So first, what do you want to accomplish? Review the purpose and desired outcomes. Provide information on what is needed. Who will be part of your needs assessment process? Looking to those assets, such as your parents, staff, community partners, unaccompanied homeless youth, super important to have their voice in your needs assessment. Sometimes McKinney-Vento liaisons feel like they are solely responsible for the needs assessment. But as we discussed uh, just right now, earlier, look at the partners that will have the best interest of your program needs and share the goals and desired outcomes of your McKinney-Vento education program. It's always important to surround ourselves with people that are uh, on the same mission and the same goals. What types of data will you collect and analyze? For example, the number of students that will need the, the services or you know, the, the uh, resources. Needs based on specific campuses. Sometimes that differs, what your elementary school, those needs might be different for those students than they are for your, for your high school students. So, you know, be real specific on that. Um, top requested needs that are not included in district assessments. So and we've been getting some of those here recently with, uh, you know, different needs to meet, um, you know, COVID, it's a different needs for this winter um, weather that we recently had. So, and then look at those trends and the needs requested. Always look at that data. Like how many calls am I getting uh, about this particular need? What are the strengths and needs of your McKinney-Vento program? As seasoned McKinney-Vento liaisons, you may know these on the off the top of your head, but for our new McKinney-Vento liaisons, it might take a little bit of time to evaluate your program strengths and needs to best determine what those are. An example could be to utilize your intake data, which I will be discussing shortly, to assist with this step. Here's a suggestion. Once your needs are identified, what priority would you assign them? And how would you summarize those needs? For example, I always looked at my needs assessment as a document that would tell my program story. And if for some reason, my director or supervisor needed to share the needs of my program for example, at a school board meeting, they could easily do that. They could take that document and be able to share what the needs were for my McKinney-Vento program or my, uh, you know, uh, grant-funded program, federal programs. Another example could be when you are at community events, having that information ready to go because you never know who's listening and looking to assist. What are your key findings of the needs assessment? Start off with a theory of what the needs are. Sometimes at the end, it may not match the original theory or it might be a little bit different. If that's true, maybe the intake data does not align. For example, 
Your intent is to provide clothing for unaccompanied homeless youth, but the needs assessment data shows they actually need shoes and hygiene products. That, so it's super important to, to look at that and, and make sure that you're um, providing the needs that are actually needed for your students. So in this next section, the McKinney Vento Liaison conducts an intake with a parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth to determine eligibility and assess program services, right? You guys do that um, as McKinney Vento Liaisons. But let's talk about the intake process and how it allows the McKinney Vento Liaison to obtain more information so that they may make a determination about whether a student qualifies for McKinney Vento program services. This, all, this process also provides an opportunity to include questions. Those questions are super important because sometimes those questions draw out other unique services and supports the student and families may need and may not you know, be shared during the SRQ. So it's, it's super important to use this intake data and, and help students and families be successful. So looking at your district and campus programs. Reflect on whether you are providing the opportunities for services and supports for the students and families in your program that they may be eligible for or meet the criteria for. So these are some uh, you know, reflective questions. Start by assessing that. You know, are we providing services and supplies, um, school supplies, hygiene items, and then are they part of the free school meal programs? So in our next slide, we're going to discuss the sample intake form. So let's take at this. Let's take a closer look at this form. The intake form is a great tool to ensure that all eligible students in a family are identified, and the services provided are documented. So this is a form that you can utilize um, to meet your LEA needs. You can take this information if you're if you don't already have an intake form. This is a great form to uh, you know, adapt to your LEA needs, put it on your letterhead, and be able uh, to utilize this document. The second page of the intake form assists with reviewing and documenting the services provided to the student, such as school of origin transportation, free, the free lunch program. And it also indicates the date those services were provided. That's super important because this is an audible tool. So you are able to say on such and such date, I provided these services to my students. And then, as, and also it has a, a documentation area where you can provide if the student was not McKinney-Vento eligible, um, then you can um, you know, document that as well. And so McKinney Vento Liaison has priorities in terms of services and support that are most important to helping students succeed in school. Some of these include supports that provide basic human needs, such as food, shelter, emotional support, and mental health care referrals, as well as additional services such as clothing, school supplies, and academic assistance. It's important to also notice trends in the items that are being requested. Like I mentioned earlier, super important because if you see those trends that are coming in, you want to collaborate with your community, with your LEAs to be able to access those, um, those needs and be able to meet those needs for your families and students. Um, this will also be beneficial for documenting and evaluating the gaps. Again, it's super important to look at those gaps in services. Um, and then, you know, that will support the needs assessment process. After those gaps in services have been identified, take a reflective look at what additional needs are unmet for all, for all students, um, those that are on the free and reduced meal programs and students experiencing homelessness. So here's our next chat question. And again, please, um, you know, be sure to participate in these chats. Um, we, we want to, for all the attendees to be able to see um, what you are doing at your program um, in supporting um, students experiencing homelessness and your ideas, um, you know, your comments. So let's take a moment in the chat, put your ideas, your comments of things that you might adjust in your program 
now that we've discussed intake data, now that we've discussed, um, uh, you know, those reflective questions, um, or what needs have been difficult for you to meet and why? So it's kind of a three-part question. So you guys go ahead and start putting in that information. Um, and we appreciate your uh, feedback and your um, ideas. Great, thank you. And as uh, Martha mentioned, it is um, so helpful to hear from the field and hear from each other and, and learn from each other during these presentations as well. So we appreciate you sharing. Um, Tammy mentioned partnering with local food banks for after hours and weekends. Mm -hmm. um, also, Anna uh, mentioned high school clothing because our district does not require uniforms. Um, Barbara said seeking resources for clothing and shoes. Um, we've also received something from Valerie um, talking about the struggles on finding ways um, for students to participate in extracurricular activities parent transportation as a difficulty. Um, also, uh, parents not always knowing that they are um, homeless, like parents that might be living um, in RVs. Um, um, also, Clarissa said um, how to um, keep documentation aside from using student folders. So um, some great um, comments and, and thoughts on, on those um, difficulties that you might be having. Um, we also are seeing mental health support with virtual students as a challenge, uh, replacing technology, um, all um, very real things that, um, that everyone is experiencing out there. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Back to you, Martha. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for putting in your um, comments in, uh, in that section, um, in that chat, because it is important for us to be able to use that as well to, um, you know, share with other school districts the things that, that's, um, that's needed out in the, in the field. And so we appreciate you participating. Now let's take a look at developing a communication plan and how these opportunities support students experiencing homelessness align with services provided by your program to include your community outreach efforts. So develop a simple but targeted community outreach process and plan for communication. So how do we do this? Okay, <laughs> to ensure a, sex, a successful process, be sure to connect. You have to make that connection. So use your needs assessment information that we talked about. Connect with your LEA's outreach lead. Um, some school districts have outreach leads. They have designated community liaisons, um, partners in education, and additional staff to help you make that introduction or connection. If you are a new McKinney Bento liaison, you know, help, let them help you make that first connection to those community uh, partners that you're trying to reach out to. Network, utilize your LEA's established networking processes. Your LEA's have all those great tools already established. So piggyback on some of those processes to reach out to those connections you have made or want to make. Collaborate, once those introductions have happened, then reach out to the new partners. Um, you can do this by sending them emails, hosting a virtual information session. That's super, super awesome right now because you know, everything's pretty much turned to virtual. So it's a great time to you know, put a PowerPoint together and just say, this is what I need. This is what my students need. This is what our program needs. Um, where you discuss the data also that you've collected and your needs assessment and how they can partner to help meet those needs. That's super important. Um, there's so many um, opportunities right now. People are asking, hey, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? So collaborate. Um, sustain. Once you've made those connections, once you have those partners, adding them to a newsletter, keeping partners interested and informed of the latest and greatest aspects of your program. Share that information. Let them know how many students have been impacted. Um, you know, provide those, um, those numbers of, of the collaborative efforts that they have 
or the partnership you you y'all have together and say you know x amount of students have been helped with you know high school clothing you know those type of things sustaining the partnership through solution focused planning feedback and follow up super important and this will create a strong foundation and focus for your program goals and outcomes once you've established a great partnership trust me that partnership will continue to grow and grow and grow provide them feedback and that solution focused planning include them include them later in the presentation i'm going to cover a little bit more about follow up meetings um, so that way, we, you know, I give you a, another tool and another resource to be able to ensure that you do those follow-ups with those partners to, to keep them interested. So here's our next chat question. What is your current community engagement approach? What new ways would you like to try and enhance these? So the first question, what are you doing for community engagement? And then what are new ways you would like to to enhance these. Great, and thank you so much again um, for your participation. As we wait for um, all of you to type busily away into the chat box, um, I'll just share a few of the other comments we've received from earlier websites on ways that um, they have, there's been that sharing and engaging of the community. For example, um, there have been newsletters uh, that have been made or building those relationships with shelters, um, and some other ideas uh, that we heard uh, as we wait for you to respond to this one on the chat um, included integrating community resources into their uh, district website. I thought that was a great um, a great way to, to build that relationship and um, community engagement. Um, oh, great. We're seeing some participation come in here now. So we have communicate with local churches and food banks. Um, also posting those flyers by um, nearby hotels and building partnerships with the local community agencies. Um, Barbara mentions that they now do Zoom calls with agencies and invite nurses, CIS, and school social workers to them. Um, participation in activities sponsored by local agencies and nonprofits, great way to um, to do that as well. Um, partnering with local food banks, TAFB, to coordinate mobile pantries. Um, also, Tiffany, Tiffany mentioned, send out monthly newsletters to the McKinney uh, Vento families. So great, great ideas. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, one last one uh, just came in, attending community events. Um, to advertise those school or district programs and to network and collaborate with those organizations. And also using social media and tagging our community members. Um, uh, they've made partnerships with food banks and others and as attending as many meetings from agencies in the district, serving on as many boards as you can, uh, being a member of the Chamber of Commerce, um, education committees, Parent Square, um, all community fairs. Great, great ideas. Thank you so much for sharing those. Develop an internal and external communication plan. What are other programs offering to help with communication processes? Include all the great outreach you are providing on your district and campus websites, as some of you have mentioned those. Um, that's awesome. You guys are doing that. You're, you're, you're tagging on social media, which I really love. Um, you're including them. So yes, continue to do that. And finally, updating your program websites. Some of you have dashboards also for your community engagement. So updating those as well. And if you, um, you just remember, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> Some of you are using exactly what's already in place. So continue to do that. Yes, absolutely. And thank you again for in, um, putting in your chat information. That is super helpful. Um, and I know it's helpful for our attendees as well. Outreach is an important role of McKinney Vento Liaison. So I wanted to provide you a simple process to develop a sample proposal. Include these following components. Identified needs, the description of the items or services that you need, 
So this is a, a super important because um, when, when requesting um, donations or those type of things, um, what brings back to my mind is um, when we requested clothing for our clothing closet, uh, we received clothing and, and my intention was for my high school students, but I received you know, baby clothes and those type of things. And, and people are well in, intended on trying to help out, um, especially when you're requesting clothing. So um, I, I became more specific about what I was actually needing. So, you know, provide the description of items, be specific. I need, you know, uh, X amount of high, uh, clothing for uh, new clothing for our high school students. Or, and then if you do receive those donations, um, then maybe looking at your school district to see who can benefit from the baby clothes or other um, items that were donated. Um, the number of recipients, super important to include that because you want to let the donor know how many students or how many people will be impacted by this donation or um, you know, these uh, services. An added personal story. I know, um, a lot of you have personal uh, stories to attach um, to the ask with the need um, to show what's important to your students and families. So definitely do that. And then additionally, designate that time to your partners by providing follow-up information and timelines, um, you know, incorporating those timelines and very organized process because that way they're able to know exactly when when they need to provide those donations or services that are being requested to meet those needs. And so I chose this proposal strategy to discuss gift cards to give a plan on how to intentionally support our unaccompanied homeless youth. So we have to be creative in reaching out um, when we're, especially when we're asking for monetary type donations as, you know, as gift cards. Um, these strategies will assist you with developing a communication proposal to share with potential donors and organizations to assist your program with those identified and prioritized needs. So take a look at this when you get a chance. Um, and, you know, walk through these steps and, and you know, again, share that personal story. Um, always try to attach a personal story and just be careful not to provide identifying information of the student, but just, you know, an example of how, you know, what the need is and how the students will be impacted by that. Another aspect of timelines to keep in mind is looking at collaborating for space and storage. And so in our next slide, we're gonna talk about um, procurement and distribution. <laughs> so I laugh at this one because um, I have a great example of what happened with me when I was trying to uh, get all these supplies, all this clothing, all these things. And I was just you know, sending it out to our class, classified section at our school district. And I'm like, I need clothing, I need this, I need that. And everybody was responding. But then my principal said, hey, Martha, where do you plan on storing all this stuff? And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> so I learned the hard way, guys. So I want to encourage you to look at how and when you will receive the supplies or donations and where and how you will distribute these supplies or donations. So, you know, just be mindful of that, you know, setting those timelines and ensuring that you have a way to store, you know, so that's another collaboration tip, looking for collaboration for space and storage, you know, collaborating with um, the school district, churches nearby, hey, I, I have this request, I'm getting all these wonderful supplies and I need some place to store them until I can distribute them. So, you know, making that, those connections with your local churches, um, businesses, storage uh, container places. And then also, I mean, with me, I went and I begged. I begged my coaches for their equipment room. <laughs> I begged the band hall where they had their um, big rolly things and like, hey, can I store a few of these boxes here? And you know, when when they're not in use, um, off season, obviously the coaches were like, "Yes, this time, 
Martha, <laughs> but I learned my lesson. And so now, you know, just looking at those type of things, you know, going out there and collaborating for those um, space and storage, and then look at your what your LEA already provides as a distribution site. For example, your nutrition distribution sites to provide an easy and already established access point for your families. Um, also, it's a good idea to stagger collection and distribution times to keep it well organized and manageable for you. So earlier in the presentation, I covered the strategies for proposals. Now let's take a look at a sample proposal for gift cards. So I want to uh, provide you, I, I wanted to provide you this document. Um, again, this is adaptable. You can take the information um, that is on here and, and make it your own. Put it on your own letterhead um, adapted to your LEA needs. But I wanted to provide you this sample. Um, it talks about the purpose of the donation request, the funding request with tiered option for donors. That's super important sometimes because you want to give the donors an option um, and how, you know, how much money that they could provide to you in gift cards. And so uh, I've provided here uh, three different tiers. So that's a, a great way to think about it, to give those donors the option, and then provide how many students will be served with these gift cards. So again, you can personalize this document with your district name, who you are presenting it to, and your contact information. And this is just an example and a starting point for you. And then next, emergency food kit. So this sample form can be provided to donors to view what most requested items for the emergency food kit requires and an estimated cost. So again, you can modify this document as well to fit your district needs. And then in our next slide, um, when we were talking about, you know, attaching a personal story, sharing personal stories, or how the students were impacted, we want to remind you that please remember to always ensure that we are following all FERPA related requirements. And here you can find the FERPA FAQ for additional information, and it is a hot link, so if you click on that slide, on that um, FERPA FAQ, you will go directly to that FAQ for more information. And here are some examples of who can be your LEA partners. Earlier, I discussed, you know, reaching out to these internal resources. So see, there, these are just some of them. Of course, I know a lot of you already collaborate closely with um, these um, programs. Uh, but, you know, just as a reminder, your professional school counselors, your social workers, your parent teacher organizations, they often have different funding venues that they're able to access for uh, things that you might need monetary assistance with. And then of course your district and campus family support services. Um, so here's our next poll question. Do you utilize internal partners to meet the needs of your students and families in your McKinney-Vento program? So let's see what you, um, are doing. Great. All right. So it looks like eighty five percent of you are saying yes. And then some of you are saying, I don't know. And that's that's great. That's why we're providing this um, presentation to you to be able to go and look and see if you collaborate with um, internal partners and who those internal partners are. So we appreciate again, everyone participating in our polls. And then some now let's look at external partners. Some examples of external partners can be your food pantry. Somebody mentioned that in our chat. Yes, absolutely. You wanna reach out to your food pantries. They're great community partners and they can assist with emergency food kits as well. Um, they can assist with your distribution sites as well. 
And then uh, some of the other ones that we want to highlight are your nonprofit organizations, especially those that are in a rural district or rural areas, your nonprofits and your faith based organizations are super important collaborators um, because, you know, oftentimes there's not any other agencies or um, community, uh, you know, shelters or anything like that. So collaborate with those faith-based and nonprofit organizations. And additional external partners can include, you know, your ESCs. Um, and, and, and also they can help with um, basic needs as well. Um, so yes, reach out to those external partners. The other one, one last thing I want to mention about external partners, and it's, and it was again, an example of, of when I was working um, at the high school is uh, your volunteer pools. Oh my gosh, when you reach out to your external partners, um, you know, you have those retired teachers that want to come back and want to help out some way. And so, um, and they're also external partners are helpful with your emergency or national uh, natural disaster support. And then there's additional funding sources, um, you know, some of foundations, you know, uh, to provide scholarships for some of your students. So, so always look into, you know, all your external partners um, and around your area. And so um, the next slide are some of the successful collaborations from across the state for internal partners. And so I'm gonna have um, Lizette read some of those out. Great, and actually, so on this slide, as Martha mentioned, um, we have some of those successes um, from maybe some of you in the audience. And uh, we'd like for you to go ahead and share with us in that chat some of your successful internal collaborations. Um, we'd like to take this time to just hear about some of the successes that you have had. Uh, we know, especially this year, um, we've had to be so creative. Um, with COVID and all of the other um, hardships that we mentioned earlier in our presentation. And so we'd, we'd really love to hear some of the things that you've all done um, and some of those positive experiences with those internal partners. So if you can go ahead and um, do that in the chat for us, we would love to um, share and celebrate and um, hear about those experiences. And while we wait, um, I'll go ahead and share a few that we heard in our previous presentations, um, some great things such as Thanksgiving drives, um, doing those drives uh, with our high school clubs and organizations. For example, um, NHS did a shoe drive. Um, we've also had um, ROTC programs that did adopt a family. Um, a CTE program that did a coat drive. Um, so, and again, um, more examples on this slide of amazing um, and successful collaborations. So uh, we'll give you a couple of uh, more seconds here. Would love to hear um, some of these from who's participating with us today. Um, and uh, that way, you know, we can share that with each other. Um, I know Student Council has been um, a great organization to, to go to, not only in high schools, but elementary schools. Those kids are so excited to, um, to um, help with the community as well. So looks like we have a quiet audience right now. Maybe they're just jotting these different ideas down. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go on to the next slide. And we're going to give you another chance <laughs> to participate. Oh, good. Actually, before we go on, I see um, Anna wrote that they hosted a prom event and were able to get over 100 brand new dresses um, and some gently used that were brought uh, by staff. So wonderful idea. Yes, thank you. Um, Jose wrote that their district opened a wraparound service building where they provided counseling services, food pantry, and clothing closets. That's amazing. Um, also PTA collaboration. Great, um, great resource there, the PTA, um, to, to um, help with some of those. Um, all right, so now as we look at our, that was our internal partners, we're going to go ahead and look at some successful collaborations from across the state with external partners. 
Um, and again, here we see on this slide a few examples of those collaborations from across the state. Um, and we'd like to give you a few moments again. Um, you know what's coming, share in that chat, please. Um, the successes you've had now with those external partners. Um, and again, this is a great opportunity to be interactive and we really would love to hear some of those ideas as well. So in the chat, if you can please give us some examples of community partners that you have had success with um, and why. And as we let you um, go ahead and type away and share those with us, um, again, from previous um, trainings, we've heard some spectacular ideas, um, reaching out to those local churches and banks um, working with local HUD to um, host education committees. Oh, great. I see some coming in here. Um, street outreach to provide emergency services, housing, cell phones. Thank you, Olivia. Um, yes, that was a great idea. Um, also, um, using uh, or partnering with the junior leagues. Um, we also heard district staff and community partners coming together um, and delivering baskets at a drive through event. I thought that was a great um, idea. Uh, community and school coming together with additional food pantries through the Tarrant Area Food Bank um, and also serving as many members of the community, at least 500 families. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, partnering with SA Threads um, as they set up clothing closet for the district. Um, it says new clothing for 13 to 21 year olds, also receiving monetary donations to cover costs for lost or damaged technology devices, which has been um, something that we've been seeing this year as well. Um, AB Christian Learning Center in Fort Worth as a community partner. Thank you, thank you for for that, also partnering with HEB to provide gift cards. So some fabulous ideas um, here. Thank you so much for sharing and I'll give it back to Martha to continue on with the next slide. Thank you so much. Wow, guys, you are really rocking it out there. And we appreciate you providing those in the chat um, so that our attendees can also, you know, share the ideas that you guys are doing. And so y'all are doing such a great job out there. We appreciate you participating in our chats as well. We've discussed program needs assessments, collecting intake data, and how we identify gaps and needs and prioritize what those needs are and build a simple but effective community outreach and communication plan. While sharing the success stories of some of our McKinney Vento liaisons from across the state, and I know that you guys have been very diligent in letting us know um, throughout this year what you guys are doing out there and being how creative and innovative you guys are being out there to, to assisting your students. So again, we appreciate all of your information. So now let's take a look at developing systems to maintain these partnerships that we talked about. Um, so many community partnerships may be easy to connect and collaborate and others may take a few tries or simply just don't work out and that's okay too. There is nothing wrong with testing the waters and seeing how the partnership will work um, when conducting outreach and collaboration. I was known for the one that would not take no for an answer. I, <laughs> I knocked on many doors. I went out there with my little brochures and my little flyers, of course, pre-COVID. But, you know, I went out there and I was sharing my information. I was sharing what my needs were, um, what, how we could collaborate, how we could team up. And, um, you know, I wouldn't take no for an answer, but sometimes, you know, I hit, I did hear the no's, um, but that didn't mean at that time for me, and I put it in my mindset, um, it doesn't mean no, like not, like maybe they can't help me right now, but it doesn't mean no forever. So after a while, I would follow up and I would say, hey, remember me? Or I would leave my information and then I'd get the call and they'd say, hey, were you that lady that came by and said, y'all needed this and that? I'm like, yes, that's me. And so, you know, so just take, take the no's as a maybe and a possibility. Don't ever take it as a no, I'm not gonna, you know, reach out to them again. So always think about that. Um, so I had successes with following up with those no's. So, you know, just remember to follow up. 
Um, and just put your name, your face out there, even if it's an email, even if it's a, like you said, a tag on a social social media um, thing. Um, we in our school district we had a classifieds for our internal school district, and I was posting stuff all the time in there because it was so helpful for not just the the teachers and the staff and the administration that worked there, but I would see that somebody shared my stuff with somebody else or a community organization that I had not heard of, but they were sharing my information. So, you know, just take those no's as a maybe, and I will follow up with you the next time. <laughs> and so follow up communication. So in our next slide, engaging and keeping your partners informed of the status of the services they provided and the impact of those services. It goes a long way, guys, um, establishing and maintaining those relationships. As a reminder, you know, sometimes we would have, you know, people draw, uh, our students draw thank you cards or drawings saying thank you so much for um, this donation or this um, service. And so again, you just really quickly always reminding, you know, keeping within that FERPA. Um, so here's our next poll question. So our next poll question is, do you track outcome information and provide this data to your community partners? So we want to hear what you guys have to say out there. Awesome. Wow, so yeah. So it looks like more than half of you are doing that, awesome. And then we have again, uh, around 20% that are saying, I'm not sure. So we hope that this um, presentation gives you ideas on how to do that, go out there and collaborate, make those connections and network. And so here with our follow-up, um, um, information that I promised you that I was going to talk about <laughs> and some steps and some strategies. I'm um, setting up virtual meetings, super important during these times. Set up those meetings, keep them informed. Conference calls to review data and outcomes. If they're, if they're not able to do the virtual meetings, let's do some conference calls. Um, you know, goals and future ideas. So many times if you ask, hey, you know, what, what do you guys think about this? Or, you know, sometimes I would go big. I would be like, oh, I want this and that, and I want this and that. And they're just like, uh, uh, we, we may not be able to provide that, but we can do this instead. And so I was still getting, you know, a, a great uh, collaboration out of my partners. And so for our last chat today, it's gonna be another two-part question. So I know I'm making you guys work today. <laughs> but what are two things you will review or implement from this training? And what is one thing you learned that was new information? So again, we really wanna hear about, um, you know, what things that you're gonna implement, what things did you take away even from the chat, ideas that, that our, our attendees put in the chat, and what was something new you learned? Thank you, Martha. And yes, this is just a great opportunity to take a pause as we've learned well this year and think back and just reflect for a few seconds to see what, um, what you can take back with you um, and commit to those. Um, we've got some answers coming in already. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, serving community uh, partners and sharing outcome data with them. Great, that's, a, that's definitely um, helpful when making those um, decisions. Um, as we wait for more answers to pour in, um, we've heard a few ideas come up. Oh, here we go, Olivia. Um, thank you for sharing. Uh, we've got new information on gift card proposals, take away, take no as a maybe, and then follow up again, great one. Um, and as Martha mentioned, that's exactly right. Um, no doesn't always mean no. 
um, if, you know, the circumstances might change for them. So um, that's a great one to take back. Um, also earn, uh, learned on how we can solicit donations for um, clothes to local companies, more ways of outreach with other partners. Um, Tiffany loved the samples provided, great. Um, and that's um, what we're here for to, to help um, provide that that platform for you to, to give each other some of these great ideas. Um, Michael said sharing outcome data with partners hasn't been done here, so we will try and do that better. Good. Um, utilizing intake paperwork for next year. Mm -hmm. um, Brandy mentions that her position's always been so busy um, and often thought about needing to take the day to get um, out into that community and meet people face to face. You just confirmed that doing this is important. Um, not being afraid to ask, strengthening district protocols to work with those internal and external partners. Um, also strengthening, um, okay, thank you. Um, more time to share with each other in our districts. Great ideas, wonderful. Thank you so much for pouring those out to us. And we'll give that back to you, Martha. Great, and, and yes, you guys, um, I hope that you learned some, some new things to do and some of you are sharing those things that you will implement. So we, again, appreciate uh, your feedback. So we've provided you valuable collaboration information today, but we also want to highlight a collaboration connection that is easily accessible and available to you. The Education Service Center Region 13 serves as the McKinney-Vento Technical Assistance Training and Support Provider for TEA. We are pleased to share resources that support your work with students experiencing homelessness and their families. Here is how you can con uh, connect with us. <laughs> con contact and connect with us, yes. So this is our homepage. Uh, we've also provided a link that will take you to many COVID-19 resources that we've provided, that, were, that have been provided by TEA and other Texas support agencies. So we wanna make sure that you take a look at that um, link as well. And then, um, Region 13 is in the process of updating the former website to streamline the user experience and make information easier to understand and find. And so again, click on that link when you get a chance. And then this is our support center, our Techie support team um, ways to reach us. Um, you are welcome to contact our 1-800 hotline number um, to talk with any one of our education specialists or you may also email us on our team account. So we are available and ready to assist you. And these are our contact information for the TEA and TEDGE Support Center team. Please reach out to us again um, through our toll free hotline or email us directly or our team email. So there's many ways for you to be able to reach out to us and we look forward to speaking with you. So lastly, I wanna leave you with a few things, um, key actions for success. So we wanna make sure that we provide you a summarization of the things that we've discussed today. So with program needs assessment, you know, just making sure that uh, identifying those partners for developing the program needs assessment, um, don't forget the assets you already have at your LEA. And then, of course, identification of student needs and prioritizing those is super important. Um, utilizing your intake data, reviewing intake forms and assessing services provided and those gaps in services and support. And then lastly, develop a communication plan. Um, create a communication plan for internal and external partners. Uh, develop a proposal for identified and prioritized needs, utilizing those sample tools um, to be able to, you know, um, get that information out of what your specific needs are, and developing systems to maintain community partnerships. Again, remembering follow-up. Make sure that you follow up and include your partners once you've established that um, partnership. And again, don't forget, Sometimes partnerships don't work out, but the ones that are working, grow them, grow them, continue to grow them because they're gonna be a partnership for a long time. Um, so last thing I wanna mention is we will be reporting these statewide 
uh, trainings and posting them on our Techi website in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so we've rounded out, we've finished out our spring training um, for the year. So stay tuned to our website, keep checking in because as soon as they're approved, they're gonna go up and you are able to share that information with staff uh, within your school district and anyone else that might be interested in um, previewing our training uh, for the spring. Next and last but not least, your, the evaluation. <laughs> so the evaluation link will be posted in the chat we really appreciate um, all your feedback on the evaluations as it assists us with future training and improvement on our resources. So please be sure to complete that evaluation. Um, we really appreciate your feedback. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope that you take away uh, some things from this presentation and we hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and the rest of your week. Thank you.